Theo Goff, say something. Um, my girlfriend made me go to AM. <laughs> George Saborin. Black. Ryan Yero. Thanks and giggle. Hate Dude. you guys. Oh yeah. <laughs> Video black. Are you really gonna put that in your video? Black. No. Like and subscribe. Hey everybody, hope you're all having a great day. So this video that you're about to watch has been so highly requested by you guys. Ridiculously highly requested. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are in high school trying to figure out how you can go to the next level, whatever sport you're doing. And so I'm gonna tell you my full story. I'm gonna tell you what I did. I'm gonna tell you, you know, my improvement. I'm gonna tell you uh, the actual recruitment process and how I reached out to schools, how schools reached out to me. And hopefully, you know, even if you're running cross country track, or even if you're, you know, not doing those sports, I think this will actually help you a lot. Before we hop into everything, please do me a favor and hit the like button and subscribe if you're new here. So, you know, grab some popcorn, sit down, and, and let's let's do this. So, just to give a little context, I'm not going to be talking so much about my actual training, how I improved exactly. I have a training tips video, I have a racing tips video. If you guys are interested in, in running and how to improve and how I drop my time so much. But I'm mainly just gonna be talking about the recruitment process, but I am gonna give you some context. So, I started running in eighth grade. I was ass at every single other sport. And so, you know, running was the one that I could do and not get physically pummeled by other bigger boys because I didn't hit puberty until like last week. So yeah, eighth grade, I was terrible. I got last place every time in track. Uh, at, a, at a small meet. I mind you, I, I went to a school, my graduating class was 80 people, super small school. So if you get last at, at one of those meets in eighth grade, you are the epitome of garbage, which guys, not really. I mean, anyone can change. Don't, don't, be, don't be upset if you're there now. Just listen to this video and you'll see. So terrible track, terrible. And so cross country comes around. It's gonna be my first year cross country freshman year. And it's the summer before. And here I am, I'm really feeling passionate about this sport. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna set some big goals. Basically what happened, uh, going into my freshman year, I set a few goals. One, I was gonna run for the University of Oregon. The University of freaking Oregon, which was like the biggest running college you could possibly go to, like the most prestigious. You know, it's so much attention. It's like all the culture at Oregon is, is so amazing. I started looking at Steve Prefontaine movies and whatnot, and so I wanted to go there. And I wanted to run for them. and. I looked at the times that these guys were running. I emailed the coach. <laughs> Didn't get an email back, by the way. This was going into my freshman year. I set the goal that I was gonna run, I was gonna break 410 in the mile. I, I just got off a 717 PR. So to say that is pretty absurd. It's impossible, actually. That's when I really started loving setting ridiculous goals because it's just exciting. I remember just chilling in my room. I wrote it down on paper for the first time and I just, I was just looking at the piece of paper like, this is gonna be me. This is gonna be me. I just felt so much fulfillment from that. And I was ready to go on that dang journey to go to the University of Oregon and, and be an awesome distance runner. Well, turns out freshman year ended up, you know, working my butt off summertime, didn't really know what I was doing. I uh, had no actual knowledge on the sport and how to improve, but I went out and I set a personal best. Freshman year in the 5K of a 22 minute, 42 second 5K. 22, 42, I know. Watch out, right? That was actually a terrible time. I thought it was good though. I didn't know what a good 5K was. I knew I was getting getting near last every meet. So I wasn't doing too hot still. Wasn't, really wasn't looking good for me. And you know, track comes around. Bust out of 538 mile, or 1600 if you want to be technical. And so yeah, I, I was on JV at a small school. Not, not very reputable. Ended up running a 227 in the 800. So terrible PRs coming into freshman year compared to some of my counterparts. You know, there was people who, in my class, class of 2017, that were also freshmen at the time, running well under five minutes. The, the idea that I was gonna win state or go to state, pretty crazy. And the fact that I was so far away from so many people was, I mean, that's, you know, like, how do you not get demotivated by that? But I didn't even care about the other people. I just looked at it and I was like, cool, I'm, I'm coming. And so freshman year, not too hot, but I still had time, right? And so sophomore year, the summer before cross country season, you know, my workouts got a little bit better and I ended up running 18 minutes in the 5K. Huge improvement, right? Like I went from the bottom of the pack to being near the top of the pack at my meets, which were small schools. It was, sophomore year was awesome. Like cross country season of sophomore year was great. I uh, had a lot of fun. Still wanted to go to Oregon, still wanted to run four, sub 14 in the mile. And, you know, wanted to do it big and you know, I thought if I could just keep doing that, dropping four minutes and 42 seconds every season, then I would be at like, then I'd be at like a sub 10 5K in no time. Uh, track season came around, ended up winning district in area in the 1600, ran a 445 PR in the mile, 
and a 202 800 which i don't know like how that happened because that was that was a really good time i was running like 208 pretty much all season then district came around 202 and that was unreal way beyond what i expected to run i still got like fourth the district with that time which we had a really stacked field anyways junior year going into junior year which is about the time that most recruiters at most colleges start you know hand picking people junior year is like when you start getting the mail from schools and, and coaches that may be interested in you i didn't get any mail i ended up running a 1656 5k a 427 mile i ended up going to state my junior year in cross country and track which was huge for me that was a huge deal i mean you can imagine from where i started to actually going to state that's unreal. Yeah, 1656, 427 in the mile, and a 202, 800 still. Didn't PR. I mean, hey, I can't complain. And yeah, I, I think towards the end, like after track season, after I ran 427, I started hearing a little bit from really small schools. I mean, hearing the PRs that I have, you can probably put yourself in my shoes. You know, where are you at with your times and, and you know, what grade are you in? I had 1656, 427, 202. And I started hearing from small schools in AIA schools, D3 schools that were kind of, some were local, but most of them were other states. Uh, and I knew I didn't really want to go there. I, I was working really hard in academics at the time, and I knew I would be able to, you know, go to a, a pretty big school for that. And so I didn't really entertain their, their interest because I knew it would just be wasting their time. I still had this expectation that I was gonna go to a huge school. I think around junior year, I realized like Oregon probably wasn't gonna happen. You know, senior year, I really improved. I didn't really improve that much, like time-wise. I think I did actually, but like just my maturity in the sport and my knowledge in the sport, just everything about running, I got better at. Almost every aspect, not just actual running, uh, the physical aspect. So senior year, I'm gonna really elaborate on this because this is like definitely the most important time for recruitment. Senior year, summer going into that it was great my training was awesome and i still didn't run too many fast times because our meets at small at small school meets they're really inaccurate courses and results don't go on to like texas mile split or like online anywhere and so it's hard for coaches to like find you i remember that summer i was emailing like the ut coach the stanford coach which obviously i was ridiculous i just wanted to hear like what their expectations were and who they were looking for. I emailed the Oregon coach, didn't get back to me. Emailed a few schools that I thought would be cool to run at, and I got a decent idea of where I needed to be. Some of them were out of my range, I think, for improvement. You know, nonetheless, it was, it was insightful to email them. So if you are in a position, it's not that hard to find coaches' emails. I would definitely shoot an email to them. Even if it's a short thing, just start a dialogue with them. Don't be afraid to do that. It's, it's never gonna be the perfect time to do it. And I realized that I'm glad I did it too. And so anyways, uh, going going into cross country season, I was feeling really fit. I ended up going to, I ended up running a 15.38 at a meet called the McNeil Invitational. It was insane for me. Like it was my first time breaking 16 by a long shot. Uh, that's when I started getting calls from bigger schools, like Texas State called. And that was one of the schools that I actually really enjoyed my visit on. I think I didn't make a decision after a few good times in cross country. I knew I had a big track season coming and I kept telling myself that, which was the reason why I was waiting. So at this point, I was kind of narrowing myself down to, well, I wanna, I wanna go to school in Texas, right? Cause the tuition, way cheaper. You know, there's so many benefits. I just wanted to stay relatively close to home. Texas A&M, after the state cross country meet, uh, Coach McRaven called me and you know we started a dialogue there and i was like whoa texas a and m that's insane like i at the time i was still you know a ut ut fan i suddenly after that phone call i was like wow i really kind of like that idea so yeah fast forward back to track still talking to coach mcraven at a and m still talking to texas state yeah and then oklahoma and alabama called me i didn't really entertain their interest either because i knew i wasn't going to go out of state and I was really interested with AM. I ended up running a 416 mile at Trader Mile, which was my PR for the year. I ended up running 1534, uh, 929 in the two mile, which I only raced it a few times. I know I could have gone way faster. All the races that I did in the 3200 were like super tactical. And so I, I, even to this day, I'm upset I didn't get to get into a fast 3200 race where I could just go for time. Cause every, literally I jogged the first seven laps of every race that I did. 
But anyways, and then I ran like a, I didn't have any official 800 times. I ran 159. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, when was it? I committed, yeah, so it was March 19th. I committed to Texas a &M. I committed to Texas a before Texas Relays meet. Coach McRaven really appreciated the 5K time that I ran at McNeil. Maybe saw potential in my, I don't know. I don't really know. I'm still amazed to this day that I'm mean, literally, tomorrow's our first official practice. Like, I don't even feel like I deserve this, honestly, but yeah, I committed to Texas A&M. I haven't looked back since. Like, I'm so excited. I'm here now, like, this is it. And, you know, I love the team so much. I think they're such a great group of guys. And I'm really excited to like make vlogs and stuff and, and show you guys, like, kind of bring you inside the circle and show you what the NCAA is all. If you guys are interested in doing like the next level, I just want you, I, I guess the biggest thing that I would say, don't be afraid to reach out to college coaches and don't be afraid to work hard and don't undervalue yourself because there were so many times where I was like when, literally when Alabama called me and when Oklahoma called me I was like that's unreal because um, Texas A&M I feel like Coach McRaven I think he said he like knew a guy that knew my coach and like that's how he found me and so I was like I think and I was just kind of lucky and then I started running better times and so it was kind of justified these, co these coaches started calling me and I was like wow I don't deserve that and I think it's important to really just value yourself you know, kind of have confidence in your in your abilities and have confidence in what you've done in the past, even more confidence in what you can do in the future. You know, the high school journey is so long and also fun. I think it's just important to try to improve every year. And there's so many people that like come in with the most talent. Talent's overvalued. I think it's important, you know, talent can take you really far, but you saw what I did. Like I, you saw who I was like four years ago and I saw who others were four years ago people that were way faster than me in my grade in my class and didn't have an ounce of talent in me for this sport of running it's just it's just about what you're willing to do for the things you want so yeah I know this video is kind of all over the place but like I don't know if you guys have any questions I know this was kind of like a, just a ramble video not much structure sorry about that but if you have any comments I'm happy to answer them down below. That's mainly what this video is for. We can have like a one-on-one -on -one dialogue. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you so, so much for 9,000 subscribers. 9,000. We're so close to 10,000, which is going to be unreal. I want to upload a lot more, kind of in the process of moving in tomorrow, and it's been kind of weird the past few days. Once I get back into a routine, you guys can expect more videos, and uh, hopefully we can make some cool running videos for you guys and also just, you know, skits, business videos that they use. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you later. If you are what you say you are